in a biographical sense in in um, in seventy um, seventy three, I think it was. Um, I at the time that at the very beginning of of seventy three. Uh, the Rolling Stones went to Jamaica to record an album called Goat's Head Soup. I had turned down going on tour with them as a percussion player because uh, I felt that if I did that, there wasn't enough... Uh, it, it would lead to some sort of negative outcome. I mean, I feared a, a dissolution and that certainly this task of writing my first book would not be achieved because and so uh, but i joined them in jamaica and in jamaica came under very strong first of all there was this discovery of fantastic discovery of reggae music and um, of the Rastafarian philosophy, which I said was akin to a wonderful golden rose piercing through the rusted corrugated iron roofs of the Jamaica's shanty towns. And I was enchanted, first revolted by the Ill illogical uh, way they spouted uh, their convictions, not even no beliefs, sheer conviction. And they used a kind of um, a kind of um, hidden language where they said things like, U is a crooked letter, it is I and I, and when one wanted to, to address somebody's attention, one didn't say, hey, you, one said Isis, meaning you're calling on the eyes. It's also the sound of the goddess. But you want to look at somebody straight into their eyes. The relationship is between I and I, high on high, and, uh, and the whole Rastafarian concept is, has a wonderful, but seemingly an absurd sort of history, and uh, it's what appears to be uh, mythology, is once one gets past uh, these uh, ridiculous objections that the logical mind would come up with. Uh, and one embraces what is called the Ganja Creed. The Ganja Creed is not about a stoner's sort of vague uh, getting stoned, you know. It's about getting high and uh, the use of herbs and such is very much in the great tradition of uh, all great spiritual cultures. And as a result, there has come this sort of uh, language of the birds type of uh, way of reasoning, reasoning with the eye and finding ways which I had also uh, encountered in with mystics in India, a, a very good friend of mine at the time in India in '68 was Shunyabai, the Lord of Silence, and he was the one who coined the word inner standing, which I, you know, I've used so much, is because it is 
how the, the Rastas say, how can you stand under? And how can the night be last? There's no such thing as last night. How can the night? There's all these sort of uh, uh, questioning of language and of the use of language in that sense, which is very useful in a Zen corn uh, type, type of way to, to get beyond conventional uh, reductive exchanges between between human beings and getting into the very high consciousness so that that influence reflected itself in the introduction to my first book you know, suddenly I found myself uh, being inspired to write in that way and to express things you know to because everything that the Rastas seem to be this delirious way of, of thinking was correct and matter was once upon a time uh, spirit was rather spirit was exiled and this exile into matter uh, apparent exile into matter leads to these Hebrew melodies such which became famous uh, uh, reggae songs like by the rivers of Babylon you know uh, which many people are familiar with and in the, the film the harder they come is one of the songs that uh, was there all the time and they have a profound uh, significance of what the greater exile from true self is in that sense so that had a, that was a a great poetical influence which the lessons from which have never been uh, have never diminished 